drink specials, nighttime pool fun. The ring that lets you tap to pay for things. We visit a farmer's market to see if it's more convenient than using your phone or credit card to pay in TechSmart. Now at noon, a robbery turns deadly as investigators connect two separate crime scenes to the violence. Thanks for joining us for the KTLA 5 News at Noon. I'm Glenn Walker. And I'm Lou Parker. One person is dead and two others are injured in the overnight shooting. Multiple suspects are on the run, but one suspect is believed to be the person killed. KTLA 5's Aaron Myers live and receded with the details. Aaron. Hi, you two. We're told that one person was possibly killed that suspect that they believe may be involved in this robbery but also a tattoo shop owner and a customer were both shot and sent to the hospital it happened here at native ways tattoo shop early this morning police say they believe three suspects approached the shop located on the 18,500 block of sherman way around midnight last night and demanded cash and other items from the owner and a customer who were inside at the time some type of altercation occurred and at some point spilled outside where several gunshots were fired at this time, it's not known how many people started shooting, but about a dozen bullet casings could be seen on the ground. We don't know if the owner or customers fired at the alleged robbers. We are trying to get more information on that. According to the LAPD, the, LAPD, the tattoo shop owner, a man in his 50s, and the customer, a man in his 30s, were both struck by gunfire and taken to a hospital in stable condition. The suspects then fled the scene eastbound on Sherman Way in two different vehicles, an older model silver or gray Nissan Altima and a white Ford van. Investigators believe one of the suspects may have died as a body was found a short time after the robbery and a few blocks away on the 18,300 block of Satakoy Street. He is said to be a man in his 30s and investigators though they tell me they are still working to confirm that these two incidents are related. At this point the suspects are outstanding and there isn't a detailed description of them. We spoke with employees at a local business who say they do take precautions because of incidents like this. We have uh, cameras here for uh, security purposes as well because we've had a few crazy stuff happen, so we keep the cameras for safety for everyone. Luckily, we have our parking lot just behind the business, so we try to at least have two of us stay together at all times and not leave alone just for protection for everyone. And this tattoo shop does have cameras at well. This time it's not known if any items or cash were taken from the tattoo parlor. Anyone with any information is encouraged to contact the LAPD. Reporting live here in Racine, I'm Aaron Myers, KTLA 5 News. Thank you, Aaron. We're following developing news out of South LA. That's where an LAPD motorcycle officer was struck by a driver who then fled the scene. It happened just after eight last night on the Southbound Harbor Freeway. The crash knocked the officer from his motorcycle. He was transported to the hospital, where he is now in stable condition. One other person was also injured in the collision. Their condition remains unknown. The L.A. City Council has renewed a $50,000 reward for the unsolved murder of an L.A. DWP employee two years ago. 30-year-old Akeem A.J. Coburn was killed while he was standing in a driveway when a person approached him and opened fire. It happened near the intersection of South Vermont Avenue and 135th Street in the Harbor Gateway neighborhood. Police say he was picking up his four-year-old daughter and fiance from her parents' home. They believe a dark-colored sedan was involved. Council members are hoping the reward will help bring in new clues to solve the case. Well, recent fights at Knott's Berry Farm have prompted the park to extend its chaperone policy now to Sundays and there are reportedly has been an uptick in unruly behavior at theme parks nationwide. KTLA 5's Kareen Winter live at Knott's Berry Farm in Buena Park with the details. Kareen. Glenn, we just spoke with a theme park industry expert who tracks trends. He also monitors the database for the industry, and he says, yes, that more theme parks across the country, they've enacted chaperone policies similar to the one that was recently put in place here at Knott's Berry Farm. And he says that's happening in light of all of the violence that continues to break out at these locations. Now, Knott's policy went into place following a fight that broke out here recently. So now on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, chaperones are required required for those 17 and under. They must be accompanied by an adult, otherwise they won't be allowed into the park. Now, other theme parks nationwide are also experiencing alarming incidents of violence among unruly teens causing disruptions, a lot of it reported and posted online. Now, experts say many factors are to blame, including staff shortages at parks following the pandemic, but that more changes are coming in regards to enhanced safety measures. 
until the